Hello guys, so welcome back to our uh, lecture. So we're gonna continue discussing, you know, the transfer characteristics and the how based on the analysis of the transfer characteristic, we can deduce or drive or imagine applications for the transistor, the BGT transistor, of course. So let's look at the transfer characteristic as we see here on the screen, okay? Let's start first by the cutoff region and the saturation region because they are very interesting as we're gonna see now. So look at the uh, uh, cutoff region, the red one here, okay? So you will notice that whenever V input is less than 0.7, smaller than 0.7 we can say, smaller than or equal of course, V output fix it, Constant equal to VCC. And VCC, remember, is the highest voltage in the circuit. For example, in the circuit, we, you know, we just solve it and transfer, uh, find the trans transfer characteristic for it. It was 10 volt. Good. Number two. For saturation, when V input was greater than 1.68, or V input set, saturation, the input voltage that will turn the transistor circuit into saturation region. V output, again fixed, but it's very low this time, 0.2. Very low. And in the, in the circuit that we solve it and analyze it, the minimum was zero. I mean, the lowest vo minimum voltage in the, in the circuit was the ground. So this is very, you know, very close to uh, the minimum voltage in the circuit, which, which was ground, zero. So look, they are, you know, they are opposite to each other. When the input was low, I mean, let's try this, let's try this, uh, you know, experiment. What if we put the input equal to zero? What's gonna happen? When the input equal to zero, this is zero. So the output will be VCC. And let's try now put the input equal to VCC. V input, which is, let's 10 volt. 10 volt, of course, is greater than 1.68, which is the V input set. Let's say it's in here. This is 10 volt, for example. So what is the output in that case? It's 0.2. And let's approximate it to zero for a moment. And now let's look at this. You remember, guys, uh, you know, the logic gates that we studied, the AND, the OR. We said that in these circuits, you have uh, two sets of voltages, either high voltages or low voltages, high or low, zero or one. That's basically what we have here. So the circuit that we analyze it and we drive it this transfer characteristic, when we put zero low voltage, we get high. So when we put zero, which is low, we get VCC, which is high. And when we put high in the input, we got zero in the output, low. That's called inverter logic. So that's another in, uh, interesting you know, application. It's called inverter logic circuit. This is a very simple circuit. If this is inverter, if you put here low, you will get here high. When you put here high, you will get low. When you put zero, in other words, if you put zero, you get one. If you put one, you get zero. Okay? That's basically one of the you know uh, important applications for the transistor. Not just the bipolar, when we studied NMOS again, this is also uh, 
an application for in most transistors. And it's usually called inverter driver because basically it drives, you know, uh, another circuit as we will see, you know, in a moment. So driver means here, not of course driving a car, but driver he means it drive a lot of current. Remember, IC is equal to beta IB. So if beta is, if, if, uh, if IB was, was small, let's say, uh, you know, uh, uh, 10 microamps, for example, and the beta is 100. So you're gonna multiply this 10 by 100, you're gonna amplify basically this 10 microamperes into 100 times. So it will reach 1 milliamperes. So basically we can use the transistor in the saturation region in, in specific to drive high currents in some circuits that needs high current. We call that interfacing circuit. So basically you have two circuits that should be you know, uh, connected to each other or the output of the first circuit will feed the input or the second circuit. But the second circuit me needs a high current to be driven. So we put in between these two circuits, we put the transistor. So that the first circuit can drive uh, or operate or turn on the second or control the second circuit as we, as we will see now. Okay, guys, so this is basically the first application for the transistor. So the first application uses the cutoff and the saturation issue at the same time. And this uh, application is called the inverter driver in which we can use the transistor as inverter logic gate or as a driver to dr or interface between two circuits as we're gonna see now. Of course, there is other applications that depend now on the active region, but we're gonna delay it to the next lecture, okay? So let's see example about the inverter driver. So here is, we have uh, an interesting circuit that, you know, in which we use the transistor as inverting or inverter driver uh, interface between two stuff, basically. The first thing is a microcontroller and a LED, LED. Okay, you remember guys, the LED that we, you know, started with uh, as, a, as a special, you know, type of, 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 LED, of, of diodes. Uh, this guy, when, when we come forward and on, it emits light. And the microcontroller is basically for no for for whom of you that, that doesn't know microcontrollers, it's just you know some simple processors we can say that we can use to control the stuff and make some simple processing, we can say. So we wanted originally in that application to drive the LED using the microcontroller. So basically, the microcontroller is a circuit, something like this, you know. With whatever inside this uh, this circuit, Let, let's ignore this for a moment, and it has you know some interface, some uh, bin, you know, and this bin should drive some lead like this. Okay, but this lead needs uh, to emit light, needs one hundred milliamperes, so there should be here one hundred milliamperes come out of the microcontroller if we want to turn on this LED. Also, our microcontroller can just, you know, uh, output maximum 20 milliampere. So that cannot happen. You know, you can't do that. If you do this, the maximum will be 20 milliampere. So you will barely see, see the light. It's not good. And that's now the, you know, the application or the inverting driving application of transistor came into uh, the picture. So we can put between them, between the microcontroller and the LED, we can put the transistor as interfacing circuits, just like this. With some other resistors, and I'm gonna, you know, explain why we put these resistors now. For example, this microcontroller now, okay, will become the source for the VBE here, which basically 0.7. So if there is no RB, the output voltage of the microcontroller, which usually five volts, 
if it's a high, and of course we're gonna control the lead. I mean, turn on the lead when when out when when the output of the microcontroller is five volt. So if there is no RB, then all the five volt will be uh, uh, placed on VBE. That of course will result in a very very high current and may you know burn your transistor. So we need this RB. So RB will take 4.3 volt, and the rest, which is 0.7, will go to VBE. And same for RC as well, okay? Because this LED needs 2.8 volt when it turns on. Remember, this circuit should, uh, this transistor should work in saturation. So in saturation, VCE will be 2.2. If there is no RC, then uh, this 12 volt of, of coming out of the VCC, point two will, uh, of it will just go to the transistor VCE and the rest 11.8 will go to the LED. So the LED will, you know, will conduct very extremely high current and will burn eventually. So we need again this resistor here so it can take, you know, uh, the rest of point two and 2.8, which is basically uh, nine volt. That's why we bought these two resistors. But this is a design, this is a design example. We need to design the circuit as, as mentioned here in the question head uh, to get the values of RC and RB. This is basically a design. Design means you have some specs, you have some specs for the current, you have some specs for the batteries that you're gonna have, you have some specs for the microcontrollers that you're gonna use, and you calculate basically RC and RB or any other, you know, generally the resistors. Okay. So the first stuff here, we need to drive or give the lead 100 milliamperes. Okay. So first of all, this transistor must conduct current to turn on the lead. Transistor can conduct current in either active or saturation. So which is better? to use it in active or to use it in saturation. So let's draw the, the relation between IC and, B, and I, B, and C. So we know that the relation between IC and I, B is linear. IC is equal to beta I, B in active region. So it's like this. And the slope here is beta. But what happened in, uh, in saturation region? What if we keep increasing IB? Then at saturation region, it will just become constant. And the IC will be less than or equal to beta IB. Look, the current IC is basically the current of the lead. So IC is basically I lead. And we want to provide a stable current to the lead. What does that mean? By stable, I mean. So stable means whenever you have some change or variations, and this is usually happens in hardware in IB, you need all the time to provide this 100 milliampere. So if you work, if you design your transistor or your circuit basically in active region, for example here, at that point, let's say this is point at which uh, IC is equal to 100 milliampere, then any variations in IB either increasing or decreasing will lead to variations in uh, IC. And IC is, is basically I LED. So you may see that the lighting that come out of the LED varies. Dimming, for example, or you know, increase in light in, uh, in luminosity, for example. So it's good to design the circuit here in the saturation region so that if IB changes, increases or decreases, you know, IC will be constant all the time, okay? So number one, you're gonna choose a transistor to work in saturation region. At IC equal to 100 milliampere. 
because IC is basically I lead, and we need to provide the lead with 100 milliampere. Based on that choice, can we determine something? Yes, we can determine RC basically. Not just for the outer loop here. We can draw it again. This is VCC, it's basically a battery. And you can just replace this microcontroller with just its output, five volt. So the, as, as uh, you know, the question it says, when we drive the LED, there will be five, out, five volt output of the microcontroller. Here is RC, which is unknown. Here is RB, which is also unknown. But now we, did, we know IC. IC is 100 milliampere, because we must choose it like this. So the LED can give us light. So from that loop here, we can see that and basically we are working in saturation. So VCE is equal to 0.2 based on our, you know, uh, choice. This is a choice as a designers. So we can say that 12 equal to 0.2 plus ICRC, RC is known, IC is not, plus VD or VLED. And VLED as given here in the question is 2.8. Remember, LEDs doesn't work at 0.7 like normal uh, normal uh, diodes, you know. Usually they require a high uh, VD, high, higher VBI, higher built-in voltage. So, so this is equal to 0.2 VC plus IC RC plus 2.8. IC is known, I'm sorry, IC is known 100 milli. RC is unknown for us. So RC basically equal to 12 minus 0.2 minus 2.8 over 100 milliamps. So this is basically uh, 90 ohms, very small because the current is very big. Good, so we determine one of the unknowns now. Now, how about RB? So let's, do Kirchhoff for, you know, the input loop here. We're gonna find that five equal to IB, RB, plus the point seven, VB. We don't know IB, we don't, we, and we want to determine RB. So basically it says in the question here, that the maximum current that the microcontroller can give is 20 milliamperes. This is the maximum. So this means that you, you may see on the bin of the microcontroller five volt, but at uh, lower current than 20 milliamperes, like for example, 15, 19, 20, 10. But you can't see five at the same time, something higher than 20 milliamperes. And it's a good, it's a good. We design the circuit with lower, you know, power consumption. So you should choose IB with any value less than 20 milliampere. Let's choose it with 10. So choose IB equal to 10 milliamperes. So for that, RB can be determined easily. It's gonna be 40, uh, 4, 30, 430 ohms. What does that mean? That means if you bring uh, a 430 ohms and a transistor with a beta equal to 100 and a resistor RC equal to 90 ohms and connect them to you know a 12 volt battery, then connected to the microcontroller. Whenever the microcontroller gives five volt high at, it, at its bin, there will be a current out of the microcontroller equal to uh, 10 milliamperes, that, that, that's what it means when we design something. So we say that whenever you give me a five, I'm gonna take from you uh, 10 milliamperes. Okay, what happened if there is a variation like 11? That's fine. So if IB is equal to 11 milliamperes, you can determine it and you can find that still we are working in, 
saturation, the IC will be constant equal to 100 milliampere. Okay, guys, that's basically, you know, uh, our design example for uh, the transistor uh, used as an inverter driver, which basically takes a low current, just a 10 milliampere, and amplify it to 100 milliampere to drive another, you know, uh, load that can't be driven before, you know, the, in, the insertion of this inverter driver. Thank you very much for watching this video and see you in the next video. Bye.